What is going on, football fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. Sorry I got this video up late. I meant to get it up much earlier. was having problems with the phone, but I always like to get a post-game video up on the night of the game. And, you know, these post-game videos are obviously not easy probably for you guys to listen to um, or for me to do after the New York Giants have a loss, especially with the way they played in certain aspects of tonight's football game, but at the end of the day, true fans still want to talk about it. They still want to know what the New York Giants got to do to improve. They want to hear about some of the positives, or some people just want to hear rants and just hear that things are never going to get better, but every fan handles losses differently, and every fan handles wins differently, um, but I am a type of person, I always like to look uh, at, at a glass half full approach. I like to t I find some positives for everything in life, and that includes the New York Giants, so I'm not going to be doom and gloom, and I'm not going to tell you that everything is horrible. There was definitely a lot bad. And we're going to talk about all of it in this video. Before I continue, I want to say thank you to each and every one of you guys that support my channel. Even through the darkest of times. I know I said it earlier today, but I felt the need. We had over 2,100 people in the stream tonight. You guys are incredible. You guys blew up the stream. You guys are true blue. And I'm so proud of my subscribers and the community that at least I have built, you know, partially built. You guys are just as re more responsible than I am. I always like to tell you guys it's your channel just as much as it is mine. I'm just, a, I'm just a New York Giant fan who likes to talk about his football team because he loves them. Tries to give you guys my opinion. Talk about the news. Um, and give my opinion. So I just want to say thank you guys for continuing to support my channel. Anybody that was there tonight, hit the thumbs up. I want to give a special shout out to Eric Cristotti. When you donated that tonight, I my jaw dropped. Um, and I felt it was necessary for me to at least say something in my post-game video to say thank you. Uh, I was blown away. So thank you for your incredible generosity. And thank you to everybody for being there. But now we're going to jump into the game. Let me just pull up the stats real quick. Between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the New York Giants, of course, the Steelers win 26-16. As the New York Giants drop, I think, 11 out of their last 12 openers. Maybe it's 12 out of whatever it is. They've won one in, like, the last decade. We'll say that in 2016. So we're used to this as Giants fans. And in more recent history, we're really used to losing. We've won now 12 games out of our last 49, um, dating back to the last three years and now one game in this season. And going into the game, and I'll get what many people may consider excuses out of the way, even though I don't really consider them excuses. I just consider it being a realist and realistic. Going into the game, if you were being honest with yourself, you were looking at a team coached by Mike Tomlin, who is one of the best coaches in the history of the sport, or definitely one of the best coaches today, going up against a guy who's never coached the game, you had Ben Roethlisberger, who's a future Hall of Fame quarterback, coming back from an injury. You had a defense that was the best defense, at least in my opinion, in football last year. Led the league in sacks, led the league in turnovers. Top five in both yards and points against. And they were third in yards against, uh, on average, in the run game. If they're not the best, they're top three. Um, you, had, you had a better football team going against the New York Giants in a year where the Giants instilled two new systems on both offense and defense. They got a brand new coach, brand new everything. And a very young roster. I think they're the youngest roster in football in terms of impact players on the team. Uh, that's why we were ranked, the, I think, the best or second best uh, team under the age of 25. But when you're that good when you're young, that means you don't have a lot of good veterans. And the New York Giants don't. Look at the impact players on this team. They're all guys that were pretty much drafted over the last three years as this team continues to rebuild. And that's what I've kind of tried to say. Listen, I'm always at least partially biased. I say it, I'm a Giant fan, but I try to be as unbiased as I can. And going into this year, I said six wins. And I said that this was a rebuilding season. And maybe we'll do better, maybe we'll do worse. But I give you guys my prediction. I don't think four or five wins is out of the realm of possibility. We play a very challenging schedule. And this was definitely part of it. The Pittsburgh Steelers, to me, if Ben is the old Ben, are the third best team in the AFC, maybe the fourth, uh, with the defense that they possess. It's that good. And they definitely have some weapons on the offense, which we got to see tonight, the way that they were able to move the football. But I'll talk about some of the positives. I'll talk about some of the negatives. Joe Judge, of course, made his debut start as a coach for the New York Giants with Jason Garrett as the offensive coordinator. We'll talk a bit about the offense. We'll start there. The first drive, the New York Giants kind of did what I wanted them to do. Now, I was I obviously, to win this game, we all knew the Giants were going to have to run the ball against a team like this, and they couldn't do it. They couldn't get the run established at all. I think Barkley had two carries where he had over five yards. He had a bunch of negative yards. Finished the game with 15 carries for six yards. You will not win games when Saquon Barkley's doing that, the best player on your football team. Uh, we'll talk more about that. But on the first drive, they did what they I, – I, I liked it. They came out. They kind of surprised the Steelers. The Steelers, of course, later made adjustments. But they came out, and the Giants came out no huddle. They came out empty backfield, shotgun formation, first play. Jones was throwing dots. They moved the ball. They converted on two third and longs. They got it to about midfield. And even though they punted, I was like, all right, I like the flow. They got the Steelers on their heels. A little bit of surprise there. They punt the ball. They recover the fumble on the punt. And right then and there, of course, I'm going crazy as a Giants fan, right? We got the special teams going. And I, as soon as I, like, you know, calmed down, I said to myself in my head, 
Uh, I try to be positive on stream, and I, I try to hope that they're obviously going to score a touchdown. But in my head, the first thing that popped in my head was, well, if we don't score a touchdown here, we're probably going to lose this game. Because you're not going to get a better opportunity than that, and you can't leave points on the board against a defense that good in a situation like that. And we had the ball on the one and a half yard line, four plays to get it in, and I hated the play call. Jason Garrett comes out with a shotgun formation, and he hands it off to Saquon Barkley. In that situation, on the goal line, if you don't think Saquon's the goal line back, bring in Gallman. I don't care. Line up in the goal line, eye formation, give it to your fullback, whatever. Pound the ball up the middle. Give your offensive line a chance. As poorly as they played this game, at that point in time, we didn't know up where they were going to play. Maybe they wouldn't have scored anyway, but I thought that that was a bad decision. Jones then on the third and goal from the three or four after they lost a few yards. Threw a ball a little wide of Evan Ingram, but when you looked at it from a different vantage point, it looked like Watt was kind of in the way, and he was kind of trying to throw it around Watt. I'm not going to get him on him too much for that play, but the Giants needed to score a touchdown there, and they couldn't get it done. And right then and there, I looked at it almost as if the Steelers scored four rather than the Giants scored three because they prevented the Giants from scoring seven points. And that was kind of a momentum-shifting play. To the New York Giants' credit on defense, they got a three and out. Next drive. They got pressure up the middle like I thought they would to start the game. They stuffed Connor, and they got pressure on Ben. And Darnay Holmes, I believe, on the first drive uh, hit Ben, and, and they got a three and out. And I think they got a three and out on the next drive or the drive after that. The defense played very well early on, but the offense after that first drive and the fumble recovery where they got where they stole out didn't do anything. Outside of that one big play to Darius Slayton on the play action, which I wish I saw more of tonight, and I expected more of. I thought the New York Giants would take more shots down the field. The problem is that was out of the play action. A 41-yard post pattern on single coverage for the touchdown. Slayton had a terrific night. It was a great call. But the thing is, play action is not going to work very well when you can't establish the run. Yes, the Steelers were cheating to uh, to get to Barkley, but the Giants couldn't get anything going. So it, it, everything goes hand in hand. When you could run, you could pass better. When you could pass consistently, you could run better. Slayton had a great game, though. Jones definitely had some positives. He definitely had some zip on his ball. He fit the ball in the tight windows. He made plays with his legs. That one drive in particular was phenomenal until the, until the bad point, which we'll get to. Um, but the first interception is a, was bad. Jones can't throw an interception on his own 25, 30-yard line, wherever he was. Can't happen. I'm going to give Watt a ton of credit. It was a great play by Watt. Um, it looked as if he was going after the quarterback. Trick me. Went off the offensive lineman, stepped back in coverage, and his reaction time. When you're talking about a throw coming out that fast, for him to get that interception like that, pretty ridiculous. There's a lot of receivers who don't catch that ball that close to the line of scrimmage. But it's a bad decision by Jones. Now, I don't get to watch the game film. I don't know what he was looking at. I'll watch the game film later, probably tomorrow, when I have an opportunity to rest a bit. But I didn't see what Jones saw there, but it was a great play by Watt. I think it was more of a great play than a horrible play by Jones. Still bad, though, to turn the ball over deep in your own end zone, and it flipped everything. That was the second momentum-shifting play for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And then the Steelers, of course, go into the half up 16-10. to And at that point, of course, you're not feeling that good. Then the Giants are able to stop the Steelers. And James Bradbury made one of the best defensive plays of the game. Some of the other standouts, Dexter Lawrence played great. Made a great play on a screen pass in particular. We had great reaction time. Played great. Leonard Williams was the best player on our defense all night. Um, constant pressure. Got a sack more than he's had last year. And Lorenzo Carter played pretty well. I'm not going to say great, but he played pretty well. Jarrell Peppers was decent in coverage. We all knew that Corey Ballantyne was going to get cooked, and he did. Um, in the slot, Darnay Holmes got picked on a bit, but Darnay Holmes made a couple of nice plays. Um, overall, you're going up against maybe the best slot receiver in football, so you don't expect Darnay Holmes to be unbelievable. But uh, I would say that Ballantyne got cooked. Um, I would say Martinez played pretty good. I thought, I thought he had good reaction time against the run. Um, yeah, I, I, overall, I thought the defense was maybe a B or a B minus. When you factor in how bad our offense was in terms of sustaining drives and not giving the best of field position, I thought the defense played pretty well, and they kind of broke down towards the end of the game. But then you go into halftime, and we, he makes a great play, James Bradbury. On the third and long down the left sideline, Bradbury is able to bat it down like a volleyball, get his hand in without committing the penalty. Giants get the ball back. They go 18 plays all the way down to the 10-yard line. And I'm going to give Jones credit a lot for this drive. Some of the plays he made, I was going crazy on stream. He made plays with his legs. He was hitting ball, balls in the tight windows. He hit Caden Smith down the sideline. He hit, uh, I think he hit Barkley on a pass or two. He hit Slayton. He hit Shepard. He was doing great. Gets down to the 10, and he throws a pick. And you can't do that there. And I know he was trying to make something there, but these were now rookie mistakes in your second year. You have to learn from that. And I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to give him a pass. I'm going to get on him. But it's still early in the year, and hopefully he gets better over the course of the season. That's what I could say. I like that he likes to take chances, but that's not a spot for it. You're going against a great defense, and again, that's a momentum-shifting play. you got to either throw that ball out of bounds or take the sack. 
get your field goal, make it a 16-13 game. So you leave three points on the board, and again, you give all that momentum to the Steelers. And at that point, the game was over. And of course, you know, we got a garbage time touchdown later in the game, which was nice to see. Maybe you build some momentum for the next week. But the game was over at, the, at that point. And, I mean, to sum up this game, you had a very experienced team going up against a very inexperienced team. You had a team filled with a... They're more talented at this point in time. Hopefully our younger players develop into that. But the Steelers are a good team. And the Giants were outplayed by a better team. So congratulations to the Pittsburgh Steelers fans. The New York Giants have a lot to work on. The off offensive line was completely underwhelming. Uh, now, I knew they'd struggle. You got three new guys. Gates got used and abused in the center. Uh, Thomas, I thought, played decent. Dupree had a lot of free... Uh, Free rain off the edge, though. I don't know what they were doing there. The run and pass blocking overall as a unit was not good. We got a lot to work on on the offensive line. And to me, that was the most disappointing uh, part of this game. I was hoping the offensive line would look more advanced than it did. But, uh, you know, guys, all I can say, I'm going to try to continue to take positives out of each and every game and hope that this team grows because I love this team, and that's how I root for this team. That, I'm that type of fan. Maybe you don't like that. Maybe you want to be the guy that flips out over everything. I'm not going to be that guy. I'm going to take the positives, and I'm going to tell you the negatives. And there were certainly a lot of negatives in this game, and there were some positives. And hopefully we grow from this, and hopefully we get better and find a way to beat the Chicago Bears Week 2. We'll see what happens, guys. But uh, again, man, thank you guys for everything you do for my channel. Thank you guys for being there tonight, and hopefully this was a bit of a therapy session for you guys. It's always nice for me to be able to talk things out. But as always, guys, if you liked what you watched, please subscribe, drop a comment, maybe give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.